I always thought it was ridiculous for a book to constantly reference spilling seeds, but that night we spilled so many seeds that Brandon had to take out the trash full of it the next morning. going through all of the videos that I filmed over the past year and finally editing these vlogs together and one of the first things that I filmed was actually a trip that I took with my friends and as you can tell from the title I've decided that during this trip it would be themed around one specific book and that is A Court of Silver Flames. Just when you thought there's no way I could squeeze any more content from Sarah J Mass's teat I have found a way to do so. But what is a required ingredients every time we engage in A Court of Silver Flames or any of Sarah J Mass's books. I got the answer for you. That is wine. And that's all thanks to Bright Cellars for sponsoring this video. I actually know nothing about wine, but the good thing about Bright Cellars is that they have a quiz for you to actually get matched with the right wine bottles for you. And they do have hundreds of private label wines that they work with, so it's really nice that they have that quiz. It was super easy. It was only seven questions. Each box is completely unique to your taste palette. So when I got my box, it was kind of cool knowing that no one else has the same exact box as I do. Also, because I'm such a noob, I actually really like the wine education cards that they include. It tells you stuff about tasting notes and suggested pairings, best serving temperature and origins, just really useful information. It's also a lot more sustainable than going to the grocery store and getting wine from there because they have sustainable varieties and biodynamic wine. The packaging is also completely recyclable and plastic free. They are giving any of my followers 50% off their first six bottle box. So support my channel by following the link in the description, take the quiz, find out what wines are perfect for you. Let's go ahead and start the vlog. wondering how is any of this going to be related to A Court of Silver Flames? Well the premise for the book is actually pretty similar to the premise of this trip. In case you haven't heard the full hour long rant video I made about the book, this is a spin-off series based on the other series about fairies with magic and big dicks. Except this time it stars Nesta, who is the bitchy sister of the original main character. She's kind of a hot mess, so the other fairies do an intervention and they send her to the House of Wind to train to be a stronger and more disciplined fairy. To translate this to real life, what better way to represent training a bitch than to actually train a bitch? We brought my friend's female dog, who, as you can tell from the footage, definitely needed some training. Just like Nesta, she's impulsive, doesn't listen to other people telling her what to do, and would probably hump Cassian if we didn't neuter her. How would, what would happen if a car like came your way? Oh, I guess. It's one way. I think it's a one way. More like one gay. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> <laughs> place on top of the mountains where Nesta is staying to train. To follow the theme, we also decide to sequester ourselves into the wilderness by taking a trip to Guerneville, a California town historically known for its logging community. It's also built adjacent to the Russian River, which is fitting considering the series' most annoying couple, Feyre and Rhysan, just finished building their riverfront house, leaving the House of Wind open for Nesta and their friends to live in. The demographic of the town is also predominantly white, just like Sarah J Mass's characters. We rented a cabin outside of downtown Guerneville so we could be surrounded by nature as well. There there's a deck that overlooks the creek, and the patio area even backs up to a hill. The area is pretty well landscaped, featuring a wood burning outdoor fireplace and a private hot tub, which will be relevant later. There's also a private tea house, which is perfect for couples who may want to get intimate with their big fairy dicks. Again, this will be relevant later. 
There's even a sign that says clothing optional at this point, which is basically the tagline for this entire series. Getting in and out of the cabin also involves walking a lot of stairs, which is a unique feature to the House of Wind since it has literally 10,000 steps that Nessa attempts to climb to get out of the house, but fails because she definitely needs cardio work if she thinks her cows are ready for that long ass staircase. I was barely able to make it out alive with these steps alone because my ass was also out of shape. The point is, I think we did a pretty good job of finding our own House of Wind, and in the mornings I made sure to train and exercise with my own Nesta like the stubborn stupid bitch she is. situated in our own house of wind. We ignored each other for the rest of the night, and just like the book, no meaningful dialogue was exchanged. Here are some other things I did to follow the book. An easy one is dressing up like Feyre, who seems to always wear chunky sweaters and leggings like she's a Pilates instructor going on a Starbucks run. Another easy thing to do is to practice feminism, which is a concept that was originally invented by Rhysan when he gave women choices. There was a Christmas novella a while back where the fairies were talking about how men should cook too, and Cassian, the main male character, has followed through with it in this book when he prepares food for Nesta. So during this trip, I made sure it was the men who would be making sandwiches in the kitchen for me because feminism. There's lots of sexual tension between Cassian and Nesta even when they're doing very normal things, so I channeled a lot of sexual energy when Brandon squeezed that juicy mayonnaise onto my bread and spread that thick over my crust. Cassian also gives advice to Nesta about how to eat healthy because apparently he's a dietitian now, so he tells her to eat things like lean meats and whole grains and fruits and vegetables and other things that an adult in her 20s should already know but somehow Nesta did not. We made sure to follow Cassian's healthy diet when we went grocery shopping. We even spotted an ugly blonde man at the store named Tamlin, and just like the rest of the book, we didn't care enough to see him again. to the park to continue training our Nesta. Let's see how our Nesta is doing now. <laughs> Turns out, just like the book, she's still a massive bitch. In terms of food, the House of Wind magically conjures up food for the characters and it doesn't really explain why. So to follow along with the theme, we ordered dinner from a restaurant that sold sushi and hamburgers. It's a combination that doesn't make sense, which is what I often say about the words strung together in this book. The house does give Nessa chocolate cake a couple of times though, which is perfect because I love cake. And now I can say I had to buy cake for business purposes with this vlog. We love a tax deduction. The house also draws her a hot bath, which is where the hot tub in our Airbnb finally comes in. I don't have the greatest footage here because it was nighttime, there was a lot of steam, and I I also realized I probably shouldn't use my friends' bodies for content, so instead you can just look at my legs. You're welcome, perverts. On Sunday, we decided Nessa's training needed to level up a little. Cassian challenges Nessa to find her balance, stretching, and doing breath work. Since there's no Lululemon Pilates classes in Guerneville, we visited Shell Beach in Sonoma County instead. The real challenge would be focusing on following our path and balancing over the rocks at the beach. With your words on repeat I will break like a twig Right under your feet Don't you say That you didn't want me You turned me upside down And then you made my bed And under my skin Where will it end If I let it begin So bittersweet You know like 
life's too short So let's not waste another minute from the montage, our little bitch actually did a really good job at the beach. She was calm, she was collected, and she had no trouble crossing through all the rocks and keeping balance. She's really come a long way with her training, and it was sweet to see her reward herself with licking her bowl of water, just like how Nessa often rewarded herself by licking Cassie and Stan. After the beach, we perused through some of the shops nearby, since visiting the shops in the village was something Nessa often did in between training. At the end of the weekend fast approached, I knew I had to address the elephants in the room. And no, the elephant is not recent schlong for once. It's a fact that in this book, there was a threesome scene that Sarah J Maas had to cut. We got an inkling of it in the published final copy, where Nessa fantasizes having a threesome with Cassian and Azriel, the two men that she's living with in the house. When I read this part, I knew I had to approach this very carefully and subtly with my friends in order to make this happen. This was such a nice weekend. You know what would make it a nicer weekend? If you met me at the tea house later tonight. <laughs> I am a little high right now, as you can obviously tell by my attire, but this is going to be the perfect setup for the ultimate plan and the ultimate climax of this video. Not that kind of climax, you pervert. Or is it? I have the tea house all ready with the mood lighting and everything, and now it's time to set up the scenario. Time's been moving slowly, so we already in too deep. Can't get no sleep on each other. Carry teasing all day, and when the sun sets. And so, as you can see, I lured my two best friends into this tea house, where under the moonlit sky, we would get laid the way Sarah J Maas would have intended in her original artistic vision. I lured them into my bed and told them the plan, that we needed to do this for the vlog. We needed to honor the true theme of this fairy dick saga. Two men, two holes in my body, and too little time to spare. Your place is my place now. I always thought it was ridiculous for a book to constantly reference spilling seeds, but that night we spilled so many seeds that Brandon had to take out the trash full of it the next morning. We haven't spoken a word to each other since. The entire car ride back was filled with silence, only the drone of the radio that could not drown out the sins we committed for Sarah J Maas. YouTubers always say, do it for the blog, but we never questioned if we really should or what we would sacrifice afterward. Even our own dog would not look at me, probably smelling the arousal spores that Sarah J Maas often mentions throughout the book. So many mixed emotions, so many incomplete plots, they were too difficult to answer with reason. All I know is that the weekend had changed all of our lives. The only question I can ask now is, was it worth it for me to do this? And for you to have watched all the way to the end of this stupid vlog? I guess we'll never know. <laughs>